All right, how is it going everyone? So someone on my Discord asked if I could kind of explain a little bit about how context works. And I, I think I have videos like this on my channel that kind of already explain this, but I figured I'd just make another one in case anyone missed any of my videos in the past. So I have a React application set up here, that ch which has a, uh, a component here that just has like an input box and it type in Bob and that sets up some state. So let me actually go to my components view and this is probably hidden from my head. So let me just go ahead and... So we have an app component here, which kind of wraps everything. And that is separated into a header and a content. And inside the header, we have a, another component called profile section, which is where we display this hard-coded string of Bob. Notice if I type this in, like Bob doesn't change any here. So notice that when I type into this input, like the idea is to have these two pieces of information shared. How do you do that, right? So. I want to talk a little bit about prop drilling and lifting state up first, and then I'm going to talk about context and why you would potentially need to use it to kind of clean up your code in a sense if you wanted to do that. So, but before we dive into that, just keep in mind that this is a tree of components, right? The DOM is made up of a tree data structure and these React components, again, kind of map one-to-one -one with the DOM in a sense. And these things also follow a tree hierarchy or a tree data structure. So in order for this content right here, when I type in, something into this input box, in order for this thing content to share some type of state with the profile section, I need to elevate state up to the parent of this. I need to put it in app basically. So I would have to store some state here and then I could pass it down to header and I could pass it down to content. And I can also pass setters into both of those. So let's do that real quick. I'm gonna show you how to do that in case you're kind of new with React. If you're not new to React then this stuff's gonna be like, a child's play to you but let's just go ahead and look into content and this is where we have this use state of bob set up so use state of bob um and when you type into this input we are just basically calling a setter on the state to change the name of the state to something else right i can kind of exemplify this as well if like if i click on the content right here notice that this has a state hook set up and if i were to change it notice that it changes you can also change it here and type in like Susie and that'll update the input. So that's pretty cool. So in order for the, the profile section to share that same state, I actually have to lift state up, right? So if I cut this entire thing out and I move it up to the parent component, which happens to be app, because app is the parent of content and app is the parent of header. If I put that state directly here, and import the use state hook. I can get this thing working, but the, in order to do that, like I literally have to pass in, I'd have to pass in username here. And then I would also have to pass in set username like this. So obviously this is TypeScript and it's gonna complain because I didn't set those up as things you could pass in, but I'm gonna go ahead and pass in username and set username like so. And now this is, you know, happy. This thing should be able to update the state of the parent component like this. So now if I type in here and click on the app component now, because before the state was stored in content, but now this thing has no state in it. The state is actually pulled up to a higher parent. And now if I type in hello, notice that the state hook here updates to hello. So we just elevated state. But now if we wanted to allow the header to also display and update that state, we'd have to do the exact same thing, which it's not too bad but you'll see how much of a pain this becomes. So I'm gonna pass in username and set username. But there's another component where this, this name is displayed, right? This thing is stored in a, a deeper component. And if you're using something like style components, you might have to keep on passing the state down further and further. So this thing would have to take in a username here. In fact, I don't even need to pass in set username. I don't know why I did that. Let's just go ahead and do that. Profile section would now take in a username. And we can display that here, username, inside the profile section. So let's just go back and delete this extra prop that I did not need. So now we have hello showing on the right. Let me go ahead and split this so you can see. Hello on the right here, if I type in Bob, they both update at the same time. So now we are successfully sharing state between different components. And the, the way we achieved that was to elevate state to a higher a level. Now hopefully the, the, the emphasis I wanted to put on is the pain point of having to continuously pass down props, right? We had a header component, we had the pass down username. Inside the header, we had the pass down the username. Inside profile section, you could potentially split this up into even smaller subcomponents. And then you have to pass down username again and again and again. 
And depending on how deep your tree is, this becomes a little bit tedious and a little bit unmanageable. So if you go back to app, there's another solution you could potentially use for having the state accessible by using context. So let's just go ahead and do that real quick. I'm gonna go ahead and just create a uh, username context here. I'll just say const uh, username context equals to create context, which I believe we have to import from React like this. And we can go ahead and set this equal to, um, let's just go ahead and pass it in as a, an object that has username of Bob and set username could just be a function that does something, right? In our case, we could set it equal to this, which again, like it's a little bit verbose to do all this, but I'm gonna go ahead and just set this equal to like void or null. Hopefully this works. We might have some TypeScript errors, but no, it's, it's not the point of this video. So now we have a context. And what we want to do is we want to have both the profile section that displays Bob and the content to be able to reference these without doing a bunch of prop drilling. Because okay? that's what we're doing right here. We're doing prop drilling. So to achieve that, what you can do is when you create a context up here, you can actually use it and wrap all the things that will need to share some type of state or value inside a provider. So I'm going to go ahead and say username context dot provider like so. And I'm going to wrap all these components with that. Uh, now, luckily we're using TypeScript, so it's going to complain that we're missing value. So you actually need to pass a value here. And what we could do is we could pass in username and set username here. So let's just go ahead and do that. And I'm going to pass both of those. And again, we're getting some type of TypeScript error. So I believe I have to do this and I have to type this. And I think you can also type it here if you wanted to. So I could just go ahead and put username is a string. And I could say set username is some type of dispatch thing. And then I probably have to like auto import these things from React to make everything happy. Okay, so I think this, this works fine. Um, but the, the point I'm trying to make is that now you don't have to do prop drilling, right? Your components that are nested inside this provider can potentially just import this context and they can get access to whatever you're storing here, right? So in this case, I'm storing a property that says username, that's a string, and then set username, which is a function I can call. And then I'm basically just taking some React state and shoving it into that object so that everywhere in the app has access to that. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put export here so that we can actually import it in these subchildren. But I think this is all gonna make sense in just a second. So let's start with content, I'm gonna dive into that. And to get access to username and set username, again, these aren't prop drilled anymore, so I'm gonna go ahead and delete them. Or instead of deleting them, I'm going to cut them out. And I'll just say const, and then I'm going to go ahead and say use context. So this is a hook that's provided by React. And what you do is you pass it the context that you want. In our case, we created one uh, just prior in the main app. So if we just auto import that here, you'll notice that we get that context. And now the content can actually use that username and set username directly here. So it doesn't matter where this content lives, and I'll show that in a second, but this thing just has access to these, like, in a sense, global state variables um, that you can use. Now let's also go back to the header. So like I said, like this header, we don't need prop drilling anymore. So I'll delete username here. And this thing doesn't need prop drilling e anymore. So I'll delete that. And now if I look at the profile section, let's just go ahead and click on this and delete this prop drilling. We're going to go ahead and just import this like we did on the other page. So let's say const username is equal to use context. And then I'll say username context like that. So now this profile section is able to just pull in that context and render out that component. So hopefully there's no TypeScript errors anymore, but notice that there's no props, right? We're not passing props. If you go back to the UI and just start typing, everything works exactly like it did before. Now the main benefit is like I could easily take content and inside of content, let's say this stuff needed to live in a form component, right? So let's just go ahead and say like const form component is equal to this. Um, technically, I could just pull all that code out and then I could return a form component here. And I didn't have to refactor anything. This still all works perfectly fine because I don't have to do prop drilling. I can move components around pretty easily. It makes refactoring a little bit easier. Um, and that is one potential benefit of why you might want to do that. There's some drawbacks to it. I do think it f makes the code a little bit more um, obscure because now you're just pulling in some random thing. You don't know where it's stored and you don't know the potential performance 
drawbacks of doing this. So I want to do point out that when I change this username, this entire tree is going to re-render, right? Usually it's not an issue, but if you have a lot of components on the page and this content had a loop in it that had like a thousand components, every time you try to change username, it's going to re-render the header, re-render the content, re-render all of those children and just do a lot of extra computations that you might not need to use. So keep that in mind. So hopefully that was kind of a good overview of like how this stuff kind of works. Um, again, it's, I would probably just stick to prop drilling if you can, but if there is a good reason to like, if you have a bunch of nested components and the tree structure is just super, super deep in terms of like the, the depth of your tree and your nodes, then you might want to use context. But honestly, at that point, I would probably just bring in something like uh, Jodai or Zustan because it's a little bit more efficient and not like re-rendering the parent components and stuff. There's, there's different state management solutions that kind of achieve a better solution than context. But if you're a beginner and you just need a quick way to like store some state that doesn't change that often, then this is a good, you know, a good go-to solution. And it works pretty performant for the most part until you start running into issues where it's not going to work. But I would say, you know, worry about that when you cross that bridge. Anyway, if you enjoyed this overview and you think it helped you out, give me a thumbs up, uh, comment, subscribe, press the bell icon. And also feel free to join my Discord if you want to talk to me directly or be part of a community of developers who are trying to help each other out and learn how to code. Have a good day. Recording.